This year I saw 44 movies that I had never seen before. And today I'm going to rank them because I make movie related videos on my other channel. So I thought it'd be like quite fitting. And also I just want to, I just like making like lists of stuff and ranking things. I have a feeling some of my rankings are, are going to ruffle a few feathers, but you know what? I, I don't care. I'm putting my opinion out there. Actually, it's not even an opinion. It's fact. My opinions are facts. And if you don't agree with me, you're wrong, not me. All right. First film I saw this year, Don't Look Up. I, I thought it was pretty good. I feel as though there was a lot of people saying it wasn't great or anything because it had like such an all-star cast. I think people expected it to be like incredible, like a masterpiece, but I don't know. It's a Netflix film. I don't know what you expect. It was all right for what it was. It was, it was all right. I'm giving it 3.5. Grand Budapest Hotel is probably the most stylistic film I've ever seen in my life. It is beautiful. The story's great. It's about like a guy that runs a hotel. He's like the concierge or whatever, and he inherits some, some money because he like shags old women or something. I, I watched it a year ago. I need to rewatch it because I can't remember like the exact details of the plot, but like they get him and like his like assistant or whatever get chased around and stuff. This is a very bad explanation of the film. <laughs> I'm sorry. This is a very bad explanation of the film. Just go watch it yourself. That, that's, what, that's what I'm trying to say. Paranormal Activity is is not a good movie. It's not a good, <laughs> it's not a good movie. The only thing it has is like the suspense. That's all it really has. It is bad. And it, I mean, you know what? It, it's quite... It's quite, um, Incredible's not the word I'm looking for, but it's, it's quite incredible in its own right because it was made on like a 10 grand budget. A 10 grand budget made this film. And I mean, it, it's not exactly like a, an amazing feat of work or whatever, but it's, it's just amazing that a, a film that cost 10 grand has got this big and made that much money. I'm giving it a two because it's it's not as awful as it could have been. However, Paranormal Activity 2, oh my days, probably the worst movie I have ever seen in my life. It is so dull. Half of it, if not more, is just nothing happening. It's just just security cameras looking at nothing. Nothing happening. It's dead. Don't watch it. Paranormal Activity 3 is a bit better. It's it's probably the best of the Paranormal Activity series. I didn't mind this one too much. I thought it was all right. Paranormal Activity 4, however, not good. Not good. One. The Borat sequel. I I mean, I, I didn't really like it that much. I feel as though it sort of lost the magic of the original Borat. Like the original Borat was, was amazing. It was incredible. Borat 2, however, it, the magic was just lost for me. To me, there was nothing much that made this like a compelling film. And I love Sasha Baron Cohen. I think he's a genius. But to me, this film, it just... It was all right. It was an all right watch. Like, if you've got nothing else to do and you, you just want, like, sort of, like, a, an easy watch, Borat 2's that. I can't even remember what happens in it. That's how, like, forgettable it was. Con Air. I really like Con Air. As you can probably tell by the title, it's about an airplane that gets, like, hijacked by convicts. It's really fun. I quite liked it. 3.5. Fargo, I mean... <sighs> I can't lie, I was a bit disappointed with this one. I love the series. I've only seen the first two seasons of the Fargo Anthology series, but both seasons are equally as amazing. Actually, have I seen the third? What's that? I'm, I'm, hang on. What happens in the third one? Because I feel as though I have seen the third one, but I'm not, I'm not sure. I think, no, I haven't seen the third one. I've seen the first two series, though, and, I, and it was incredible. So I was expecting the, the movie to be on a similar level because it's got, like, such high praise and everything. But I don't know. I just, I just didn't find it all that... All that great. And a lot of people may come for me for that because it is a classic. But I don't know. I just didn't enjoy it all that much. And that's why I'm giving it a three. Doctor Strange Love is probably one of the best comedies ever made. I loved it. It's about the Cold War and, and nuclear war and all that sort of stuff. It's really, really good. If you only have an hour and a half spare, it's probably the film I suggest. Four and a half. Happy Gilmore is one of them films that achieves what it sets out to achieve. It's a relatively funny, lighthearted comedy film. The plot's decent. You know, there's not really much else more to say about it. 3.5. It does what it says on the tin. In Time is quite an interesting film. It's set in a world where time is currency so you can pay for things with like minutes of your life. I'm not going to go too much into it but it's a decent film. It's a decent film. I, I definitely recommend it. 3.5. We Need to Talk About Kevin is one of those films where I feel as though I, I probably missed something but I don't know because it seems as though like all the ratings and reviews online seem to like this film but I don't know. I just found it a bit like boring and dragged out. So the plot is there's this kid right who does like a, a, a massacre at a school with a bow and arrow and it sort of cuts back and forth between before the event and after the event so you see kind of what happened leading up to it like his childhood or whatever and you see the repercussions on like his mum and stuff and I don't know I just maybe this film just wasn't for me I feel as though this film just probably wasn't for me but I don't know I just, I just didn't like it all that much two out of five the Batman is great I love the Batman I was seeing a lot of the Batman hate 
hate online. But I loved it. I thought it was I thought it was great. I don't need to go into what the Batman is about. Everyone knows what the Batman is about. Four and a half out of five. Loved it. My only criticism would be it was three hours long and I needed to piss in the cinema after one hour. So I spent the last two hours of the film dying for a piss because I didn't I didn't want to miss any of it. The 40-year-old virgin, aka my memoir. I didn't, I don't know, I just didn't really like this film all that much. I feel as though most American comedies just aren't for me. Like, I just don't like them. I, I, I watched The Pineapple Express last year and I remember really liking it as a kid. But I watched it as an adult and I was just like, this is so shit. And that's the same sort of thing I got with The 40-Year-Old Virgin. I feel as though it's one of the films I watched when I was maybe like 12 years old. But then I rewatched it again and it was just... I don't know. I just didn't like it. Two out of five. Baby Driver is outstanding. I love Baby Driver. It's about a getaway driver. There's loads of cool car chases. Oh, I love it. It's a great film. Four out of five. Whiplash. 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 What more can I say about Whiplash? I love Whiplash. Probably the best film I've seen this year. Actually, no, definitely the best film I've seen this year. It is absolutely outstanding. If you have not seen Whiplash yet, what are you doing with your life? Go and watch Whiplash. I love Whiplash. Five out of five. I don't even say what it was about. It's about like a drummer who wants to get in like a band and the conductor is like well mean in that and he like throws stuff at him and like shouts at him but he's determined. He's a determined drummer. Yeah that's the plot. Hurt is one of them films I looked at and I thought maybe this isn't for me. Maybe I, 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 I don't know about this one but I loved it. Incredible. Incredible. And I know I didn't pronounce that right probably but it is Good. It's about a guy that falls in love with his operating system and becomes the ultimate e-data. And it has the Joker in it. What's not to love? Four out of five. Morbius is... <laughs> I mean... <laughs> Everyone knows about Morbius. What more is there to say? I went into it expecting to absolutely despise it. Absolutely despise every part of it. But to be honest, it's not as bad as a lot of Marvel films to me. It w I mean, there's there's points, there's parts of it that are definitely worse. Like the production value of it. Like, er like the produ anything to do with production is far worse. But I don't know. I found it more like captivating than most. But am I just stupid? Am I just stupid? But yeah, no, it's, it's certainly a terrible, terrible film. Two out of five. The Emoji Movie. What can I say about the Emoji Movie that hasn't already been said a million times? It's a movie about emojis. It's it's not good. One out of five. Slumdog Millionaire is one of them films I went into expecting to really, really, really like. But I came out of it just being like, that was... That was okay. Like, if I knew what it was going to be, I would have probably spent that two hours watching a different film. It's okay. Maybe, again, maybe it's just like one of them films that isn't for me. But I'm giving it a two and a half out of five. Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Midness. It's a Marvel film. It's... It's a Marvel film. Like, it's not It's not particularly good. It's not particularly bad. I like some of the practical effects, like with the uh, Doctor Strange when he's like a zombie or whatever. It's a Marvel film. It's mid. Three out of five. Lock, stock, and two smoking barrels. Snatch is probably my favorite film of all time. I love it. So I decided to watch Lock, stock because it's by Guy Ritchie and it's the film he made before Snatch. Really, 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 really good. Not as good as Snatch in my opinion, but it's close. I really liked it. It's about this guy that loses a poker game and has to pay back a load of money to this uh, gangster type guy. And there's a whole load of like, it's like Snatch. It's the same sort of thing as Snatch where there's a whole load of stories going on at once and they all kind of converge in a way. It's really good. I liked it. Four and a half out of five. Everything Everywhere All at Once is a good film. I liked it. It's about like the multiverse and stuff. It's really hard to describe this film because it is so absolutely confusing, but it's really great. It's really visually appealing. There were a lot of points where I just had absolutely no idea what the fuck was going on. No, no idea where the fuck we were. No idea what universe we were in. It's really confusing but that is probably just down to my own lack of intelligence. I'm giving it a 4 out of 5. I liked it. Hustle is like one of them Adam Sandler films like Uncut Gems. Not as good as Uncut Gems, but it's it's like one of them films he makes that you look that you watch and you're like this isn't like a typical shit Adam Sandler film. This is like actually a decent film. It's about an NBA basketball scout that discovers a really good player in Spain and he like trains him up and it's really, really good. I really liked it. I really liked it. It's it's quite a wholesome film as well. Three and a half out of five. Top Gun Maverick is probably my favourite film to come out in cinemas this year. Like the, my favourite new film. And I know a lot of people are going to be like, oh, what about Everything Everywhere All At Once? Everything Everywhere All At Once is an artistic masterpiece. I know, I know. But, but a jet plane goes, yo, yo, and he goes, bleh, bleh, bleh. They like shoot each other and shit. Oh, it's sick. Top Gun Maverick is fucking unbelievable. I loved it. <laughs> Four and a half out of five. Goodwill Hunting is a good 
wholesome film. It's about a guy that's like well intelligent, but he just works as a janitor and he seems content in working as a janitor and he wants to hide his intelligence. It's got Robin Williams in it and oh, it's, it's, it's really wholesome and I like it. Four out of five. Nightcrawler. I liked Nightcrawler. It's about a guy that photographs crime scenes for like newspapers and news sites and stuff and he like proper gets off on it so he starts trying to like stage his own crimes and all that and like basically become a participant in it. Really good. Really good. Four out of five. The Big Short. It's a film about mortgages and finance and those are topics that I find boring. I don't like thinking about mortgages. That scares me. But it's quite an interesting film. Um, there are points which it is quite boring, but that's just because I don't really care all that much about this sort of thing. But it, I, I can recognize it as a really good film and I did quite enjoy it. Three and a half out of five. Black Swan. Oh, mwah. what a great film. I wasn't expecting to like this film as much as I did because it's about like ballet and all that, that, that girly shit. I ain't into ballet, but it's oh, it's really good. It's really good. It's about a it's about a ballerina that's like trying to be well good at ballet and stuff. Very good. Very scary at points as well. I liked it. Four out of five. The Day of the Jackal is like a relatively unknown sort of film. It's like well old. It's from the 1970s. My friends actually suggested I watch it because I don't know. I guess I thought it was a good film. So I tried to go watch it, but you, you couldn't buy it anywhere. You couldn't at the time. You, I think you could buy it on YouTube now. But at the time, you couldn't buy it on YouTube. You couldn't you couldn't watch it anywhere basically. So I watched it in like. like 15 different like cut up parts on YouTube like you know how you, ha how you had to back in like 2010 you've watched like on a Garfield part 3 of 10 you watch like you watch like a film in broken up bits. I had to do that to watch this film, but oh my god, it's very good. It's about a hitman that gets hired to assassinate the French president. Really, really good. I definitely recommend. Four out of five. Caliber is a film that I really, really liked, and I can't say too much about it because it will just spoil it. But essentially, two friends go hunting, and something happens, and uh, it's it's good. It's good. Watch it. Four out of five. The Gray Man. I was I didn't expect to like the gray man as much as i did i'm not really you know into those sorts of films but i didn't think it was too bad i thought it was all right it was all right i'll give it a 3.5 out of 5 it's just like a half decent action film in bruges is probably the most underrated movie ever made it's about two hitmen that get sent to belgium after a hit goes wrong i'm not gonna say too much about it because again i feel as though i'd end up spoiling it but watch it watch it. I'm giving you a lot of recommendations here. You better be writing these down. Also, let me know in the comments if you do end up taking any of my recommendations on board and what you thought of them. Reservoir Dogs is a classic and I can't believe I never watched it up until this point. I feel as though I watched like a few clips here and there of it, but I, I've never seen the film. And as a, as a big Tarantino fanboy, as all alpha males are, I really liked it. I thought it was really, really, really good. Four and a half out of five. Jackie Brown, again, another Quentin Tarantino film that I haven't seen before. I do feel as though Jackie Brown is the weaker of his films but then again all his films are like superb the only one of his films i haven't seen yet is death proof and i think generally that scene is like the weakest one but of the ones i've seen jackie brown is definitely the weakest but it's still pretty good i'm, I'm giving it a three and a half out of five it's about a flight attendant that gets caught smuggling drugs and, and loads of cash through like air travel and like a load of, a load of stuff happens it's good it's good I, I'd, I'd recommend it but it's not like close to being the best film ever okay i feel as though this is where people are, are gonna get mad i feel as though people are gonna get mad at this one because this film is pretty love but 2001 a space odyssey i did not like it i did not like this film at all and i understand why people do like it i understand it it's great for its time it's a pioneer of its genre but it's it's not good it's not a good film it looks great it's visually absolutely stunning like just look at how they did everything with the practical effects and like the guys in monkey costumes it's incredible it's incredible it looks great and i'm giving it a 2.5 solely because of the artistic merit it's incredible in that way but the story is just oh it's so boring like, there's, like, two-minute shots of, like, a fucking, a, like, a spaceship pod turning round. It's so boring. And I'm not, like, Marvel fanboy that needs, like, constant fight scenes or something. I can appreciate a slow-burning film. But 2001 A Space Odyssey, it's, I mean, it's not good. I mean, it, it left me thinking for a while. And I feel as though that's why a lot of people like this film. Because it's one of them films that makes you think. Because it's so ambiguous. But, I mean, like, once you sort of figure out what it means. And, I mean, it's, I don't think it's ever been confirmed what the, that, what it all actually means. But I think a lot of people have a very good idea of like what it all means. I mean, it's okay, but the film in itself is just like, oh, it's boring. And I know I'm going to get told off by like film bros for that, but I don't care. I didn't like it. I wouldn't recommend you watch it. It's great as an art piece. If you look at it as an art piece, it's phenomenal. But as a piece of entertainment, it's not good. The Father is definitely the saddest film I've seen all year. It's about a guy that's suffering from Alzheimer's and the film is sort of told through that lens of Alzheimer's. It gives you a good idea well, what, what I'd assume is a good idea of the disease and how it can affect you and like make you so confused it's 
really sad and also absolutely brilliant. Four out of five. Get Out is probably the best horror film ever made. Actually, I guess that comes down to how you define horror because a lot of people count like Silence of the Lambs as a horror film. It's not. Silence of the Lambs is not a horror film. I mean, at least I don't I don't count it as a horror film. Get Out, however, is like a, a horror film, I think. It's so creepy. If you, if you don't know what Get Out is about, it's about this black guy that goes to visit his white girlfriend's family and there's loads of things about them that are just really weird and all the other like black people he comes into contact with are just acting very, very strangely and it's, oh, it's so creepy. It's so, it's such a creepy film. I love it. Four and a half out of five. Help is a film about a care home during the COVID pandemic and the sort of struggles the care home staff went through and it's really, really eye-opening to how sort of stressful those sorts of situations can be and I found the film all right. I didn't find it like exceptional. I thought it was, I thought it was good but I don't know. Again, I feel as though this is maybe just one of those movies that wasn't for me. Three out of five. I haven't seen Matilda since I was probably about nine years old and I rewatched it recently and oh, it's so good. It's so funny. Danny DeVito in this is it's incredible. I wasn't expecting this film to be as funny as it was or to laugh that much at this film, but it's so good. I, re I really liked it. Three and a half out of five. Boiling Point is a technical masterpiece. It's a film that is genuinely shot in one shot. It's, it's done in one, the whole thing is done in one shot. It's incredible. It's about an incredibly stressed out chef working in, uh, in a fancy restaurant and loads of things are going wrong. It's a really good film. My only qualm with this film is they set up a load of like different plot points. They're actually really interesting. For example, I'll give you one. There was a uh, a table. There was a guy on a table that was rude to a particular uh, to a particular waitress and they don't revisit it. And it w I thought it was such an interesting plot point to set up, but they don't revisit it. And there's like one or two other bits in the film that they just don't revisit. They set up these things and then don't revisit them. I'd put it down to the fact that it's, it, it's just a lot harder to make a film that would be much longer than how it is in one shot. So that's probably why they cut out them little bits. But I thought they were really interesting plot points and I'd, I'd, I'd like to see what they could have done with them. And I was quite disappointed in the end when they didn't revisit them because I actually found them little side plot points more interesting than the main plot point. Yeah, uh, four out of five, really good film. The Naked Gun is like an old sort of comedy film. It's really stupid. It's like one of them really stupid comedy films. Constantly breaking the fourth wall. It's, uh, I, I, I really liked it. I thought it was really funny. It's a parody of like spy detective films. Really good, 3.5 out of five. And the final movie I watched this year, The Muppets Christmas Carol. I, 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 I maybe saw this film in primary school, I think, but other than that, I hadn't seen it. The Christmas movie that I watch every year is How the Grinch Stole Christmas, you know, like the, the gym carry on that's the one i watch every year but i decided to put this one on yesterday when i was like wrapping presents and stuff and i liked it i thought it was a good film not quite as good as the grinch though in my opinion i thought it was good not quite as good as the grinch 3.5 out of 5 but anyway guys i'm gonna leave it there for today's video i hope you enjoy it if you want to see more videos like this where i talk about like films and stuff let me know uh, uh, some of you probably won't want me to do that because you probably think my opinions are bad but anyway uh, i'll see you in a bit bye